everybody, it's Sally here and I'm back on my LK video series uh, number two for hems and edgings and we're on video one, preparation and planning. You know, there is an old saying going around, isn't there, that if you fail to plan, you're going to plan to fail. And so I consider that it's important to devote a little bit of time before you get anywhere near the knitting machine to looking at your project, understanding what it is you want to knit and making sure that you know what you're doing. Because, um, you know, if you look through your project beforehand, find the potential pitfalls and then practice or learn how to deal with them, you know, it's better to do it up front. So, you know, you can learn a new technique or whatever it might be. So that when you actually hit that point in the pattern, you're not faced with doing something you don't understand and you know having difficulties with the garment that you're making when you're you know in the middle of the project itself much better to plan ahead and um, make sure you know what you've got to do at each step of the process uh, so you're not hit by something unexpected at an awkward time um, so I'm assuming always a dangerous thing to do but I'm assuming that you know you will have a project in mind or maybe a pattern that you want to follow perhaps not right this minute but you know when it gets to it that you've got a pattern you want to follow and as with everyone else that's got the LK150 if it's got some sort of an edge on it you're going to be asking yourself that question well how am I going to deal with that um, before you get that far let's just deal with the question of have you got the right yarn or are you knitting at the right tension um, most patterns will suggest a yarn this one I've just picked up as an example suggest any king cole double knitting yarn and then it will tell you what the tension should be um, and obviously you've got to be able to get close to that tension if not match it exactly to make sure that what you're going to knit is going to come out of the correct size and shape at the end um, I've done other videos about tension, about how to knit tension pieces for measuring with the lovely magic yellow scale. So please, if you don't know how to do it, head off to YouTube and find out. Because in knitting to a, a repeatable, accurate tension is important. The um, instruction book does tell you on page 28 how to knit, taking a tension gauge on every needle. Um, so that's their backup instructions as well. But you should end up with something that looks a bit like this. Um, fixed number of rows, fixed number of stitches, and the scale takes care of the variables and does the equivalence calculation of stitches and rows to 10 centimetres on what you've just knitted. So that's the first thing. Um, if you are nowhere near the recommended tension for the pattern that you want to knit you need to be asking yourself whether you've got the right yarn or whether you've made a big mistake knitting your tension piece so double check double check that your gauge swatch tension piece has been done correctly so there you are you've um, done your tension piece you're leaving it to settle you might have had to wash and press it but then you're looking at your pattern and you know, like a lot of patterns for garments, it's going to have edges on it. And in a lot of cases, they're going to be ribbing. This machine's got no ribber, so what are you going to do about it? Well, what factors are going to affect your choice of what edging you're going to do? Um, well, first question is, can you hand knit? Are you willing to hand knit? If so, you might be perfectly happy then with hand knitting the ribs and job done. Um, if you're not happy to hand knit or can't hand knit, you might be quite happy to do a reformed rib on the machine, uh, which is where you drop stitches and latch them back up. Uh, looks very neat, looks very nice, a uh, little bit time consuming. And for me, it's a bit back aching, which is why I don't like to do it. But you know, if you're quite happy to do reform rib, you can do reform rib. You could possibly do mock rib, okay? Um, has its uses it's not as stable as a true rib 
and will lose its shape over time but it, you know in terms of looks it's quite a good alternative or you might want to consider totally moving away from rib and doing something different a hem some other kind of edging pico edge whatever it might be the choice is yours you know it's your garment but you obviously need to think about what the the garment itself is and whether changing from a rib to a different kind of edging is going to suit the item in question um, a lot of people like to switch over to some kind of hem if they don't like things that cling around their backside me included I mean I quite like tunicky tops because they hang loose and don't <laughs> emphasize the fact that I've got a big bottom um, so oh, one other possibility you can do if you have another knitting machine um, double knit will quite often knit uh, on the river on a standard gauge knitting machine where it won't just knit on the flatbed itself so you can always if you've got a standard gauge with a river have an experiment with it and see if you can knit your ribs on there take off on waist yarn and rehang onto the LK150 you could likewise do that with the chunky machine but you must bear in mind that the chunky machine has got a lot less needles than the LK150 so make sure that you've got enough needles cast on so you if you are a hand knitter you might also be able to crochet so you could could consider doing a crochet edge if you're a crochet crocheter crocheter um so there's lots of options uh the other thing that you might want to take into account is what is your yarn made up of is it a synthetic fiber is it a pure wool is it a cotton or a linen or a blend of some description and if so that can affect how it will behave how the edges will behave uh, once you've taken them off the machine um, hems in particular have a tendency to flip upwards and so you really need a yarn that's going to be able to take a good lot of blocking and pressing to get a successful hem Otherwise, you might have to fiddle around with the tensions on the inside area of the hem versus the outside area of the hem to get it to lie flat. So that comes down to what I was saying earlier about preparation. There's no really easy way to say it. So I think that for every project, every different yarn, you've got to test your hem or your edge that you're going to do. I mean, if I was going to do a rib I probably wouldn't bother because we all know how rib behaves but hems you know tricky things and you don't want to you know, start knitting hundreds of stitches across the back of your garment take it off and discover that the blinking thing won't sit flat practice it beforehand make notes keep a notebook beside you and write down what tension you had it set at and it's common practice on hems to knit the inside of the hem at a slightly tighter tension than the outside of it. Um, sometimes you knit less rows. But, you know, what will work on one yarn might not work on another one. So you really do need to test it out for each time you start something new, with a new yarn, new garment, new edging. Test it first. I can't stress this enough. Um, I do it. I always do it. Whatever it is I'm making, I won't just sit there and jump straight in. If I'm going to put some sort of a hem on it, I'll try it out. Um, uh, some of you know I moderate on, co-moderate on the Machine Knitting Beginners and Returners Circle on Facebook. And there is a project in there with the LK150 sweater, CAL, which is K-A-L for Knit Along. And as part of that project, I have explained this about the hems in great detail, but I'll be doing it again on the relevant video for this series. Um, so, uh, yeah, it all comes down to reading your pattern, understanding it, knowing what's needed. If you don't know, go away and find out. Think about what hem you want to do in, as, you know, either the rib or something instead of the rib. I mean, as, as you will discover from this, there's quite a lot of different options. You know, remember to make notes and just like a good old Boy Scout, be prepared. Um, so I think that's about all I'm going to say on the topic of planning and preparation. Um, 
if anything else springs to mind, I'll have to cover it as I go along. But uh, uh, I think that's about it for this point. Um, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is rib, uh, rib variations. So I'll see you on the next video.